Hi guys and welcome to another video. So in this video I'm going to be touching upon last weekend's draw against QPR, that nil-nil, that point we did gain away from home with, with 10 men. I'm going to get into that, then we're also going to go into the preview uh, for the game against Preston midweek, uh, hoping to get back to winning ways there. But firstly, can we hit the like button? You've been absolutely smashing it recently. I might not seem as overly joyous and positive because of course... The nil-nil wasn't ideal, however, I guess in the circumstances you can see it as absolutely a point in gain, but I'm not going to be so in your face and screaming about it as much as I usually am, but we are still top of the league, and as you do know, you are contractually obliged to hit the like button, because Sunderland are still top of the league. But we will get into it, we'll get into the game, apologies it is a little bit late this one, I was just so busy, pretty much the second that game finished, I've just been so busy with different bits and pieces here and there, so I am going to do a bit of a mix and match of a little bit of a review and a little bit of a preview. Um, but in terms of, of that game, if you handed me the nil-nil beforehand, would you have taken it or would, have been, would I have been overly happy with it? No, I probably wouldn't. However, if you didn't watch the preview to the game, I did say that this will not be easy. It is still very, very early in the league, so particularly to sort of writing off teams purely because they're in the bottom three or bottom four or bottom six or whatever it is. I know Cooper was second from bottom at the time. Um, you can't write teams off and just think, oh, well, that should be an easy game. It absolutely isn't. And that definitely didn't tell the tale of, of QPR in general anyway. Again, I allude to the preview to it. They definitely didn't deserve to be there or in terms of their performances don't show or reflect a team that are fighting in the bottom three. Um, they were always a team that were going to make chances. They get it, yeah. It was just a case of can we make the most of our chances at the other end and we didn't and, and getting a man sent off, that didn't help either. So I wasn't surprised to see QPR come out and play as well as they did because they did play well. But in turn, what I was a little bit surprised with, particularly the opening sort of 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes, uh, the way we approached the game, I wasn't happy with at all, in that chunk of the game in particular, because our press was very sort of half arsed And what I mean by that is, and I'll use just one example, I'm not picking out one player, but for example, there was a handful of times where Paddy Roberts on his side, he would bust a gut to get back, to sort of get, come back to get himself in front of a, an opposition player, but then he wouldn't go for the ball. He'd sprint back to get sort of near the opposition, he'd get back, like, come back to get... Like, Buster got to get back to Elias Chair, who had a very good game, looked very exciting, he always is a dangerous player. But if Buster got to get back to him, he would, he'd get in front of him, and then he'd just sort of watch him, walk past him. Just as long as that's somewhat near him, that is that doesn't count to me as a press. You'd still give him a few yards, you're still letting him walk past you, and that happened with a load of players on the pitch. We were just, we're Buster got to get into a, into a shape, but then we wouldn't press a player. Do you know what I mean? It, it, was, it was such a half arsed half-baked press, and it just looked lazy. It was almost like the, the players were underestimating how good these lads are because they aren't a bad team, QPO, again, despite the what, what the table tells you. So I, I felt like we did underestimate them a little bit, but then we did come into our own because we did allow them plenty of space and plenty of half-half sort of half opportunities, half-chances here and there. We, we come into our own. We did make a handful of chances. Easter all got in on the right-hand side of goal and he's popped it wide. Dan Neal, who I said in the pre preview as well, I predicted he was going to get himself in the score sheet because I was saying that he keeps on knocking on the door and he hit the post, the ball was put in, nodded down to him on the edge. It was a great half volley, beats the keeper, hands up, hands down, and they, um, it balloons off the, uh, off the post. And we did make little chances here and there and that were it, but then second half comes around and uh, again, it wasn't an ideal performance. It was a bit scrappy at times. It wasn't the best, it wasn't the easiest on the eye. But then it changes the game when Job gets himself sent off. And I'm not going to sit here and give him too much shit because I don't think it was a malicious challenge. And he's had an outstanding season so far. It, I don't think there was any sort of malicious intent, as I say. Um, it was just a poorly timed challenge. He's got him for the ball. I think he's tried to go in fairly, but he's just gone just over the ball. And he, and he studs her up on uh, high up the shin as well. So it's it's one of them. I don't think he, he meant it. I don't think he went in with pure aggression and went in to hurt a player. He just timed it poorly. And that, that's just the way it works, unfortunately. And he, got, and he was sent off. But then what I was proud of, because up until that point, again, I wasn't particularly pleased or overly impressed. What I was impressed with was the resilience uh, in the teamwork and the display, that the grit and determination that the lads shown to really stick together and grind it out. Because that's that, that's a situation, a scenario where we haven't had so far this season under Reggie Labrie. So it was... It was very interesting to see how we would react, and we really did dig in. Like everyone from the from the front all the way to the back, really dug in, really pulled the sleeves up, and uh, and give it a good go to uh, to keep them at bay. And they did throw everything, particularly the last few moments of the game where they threw the kitchen sink at it. We just put everything uh, behind him. You know, Simon Moore in goal, handful. Of course, there was no real proper clear cut chances where he had to pull pull you know balls at the top bins type thing. But he did his job, and we saw it out as a point. So we went for him. Again, if I, if you offered me a point before the, before the game, I wouldn't have been massively pleased. 
But to say we had a, a man sent off from however long, we had, what was it, 25 minutes plus maybe, I can't remember what time it was exactly when he gets sent off. But to deal with it, to, to deal with 10 v 11 for that amount of time and come away with a point, I'll snap your hand off for it. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Again, it wasn't ideal, but we're still top of the league. We're still three points clear. Again, it's still very, very early doors, but we're still top of the league and it's a point away from home. If you look at it that way, then it has to be a positive and a positive only. But getting into this game against Preston this week away from home. Of course, last time we played Preston was in the Cup. Early doors, our second game of the season when we got beat. That was our second string squad. And we got beat quite comfortably and looked really, really poor. This is going to be a totally different uh, team, of course. We've got Job, who is now he's going to be out for three games, you would think. We've got three or four players on, on, I think, four yellow cards out of five. And which likes Troy Hume and others as well. I think Dan Neal, others. I think Paddy Roberts might be on it as well. I could be wrong here, but but there are a handful of players that are, are all very, very close to a potential suspension, that they're all on eggshells at the moment. But with Job now out, and Rig was, uh, um, he was out as well uh, against the game against QPR. There's loads of rumours before the game that he had really heart problems, but it looked like it was a chest infection or some kind of chest issue there. But Reggie says that he is clear of that and he is ready to play. Um, there's still a handful of players that still need to come back, you know, and this is what worries me. As soon as you do get a few bookings and a few suspensions, you've got, you know, Samid, who's injured, who I've been really looking forward to, and I really can't wait to see, because I can't wait to show, well, obviously it's not me, but I can't wait for him to show us what he can do, because he, do, he does come over as a very, very exciting prospect and potential player. Um, so I can't wait for him to come back. It'll just help and shore up that midfield as well, and it give more competition there at the moment. Alexic is still on the bench. He hasn't really he come on yet. But uh, Reggie said that he's getting closer and closer. He's still taking time to adapt. His, his language, the language, sorry, the language barrier is still absolutely there for Alexic. Um, however, football, it's all a universal language, which is what he keeps on alluding to, and which I agree with as well. Um, but he will be nearing a, a debut at some point, we'd think. Um, but I would, if Re if Rig is okay, I would assume that he would just go with uh, uh, the midfield trio of Dan Neal, Alan Brown to play his former club as well, and. Um, and rig as well you would think so my uh sort of wanted the kind of 11 that i would go with myself would be this so on screen as you can see it is pretty much an unchanged 11 from the team that did play qpr however rig would come in for the for now suspended job so that would be my line i won't change too much i'm not too sure what he could because he's not really been too experimental with his players to be fair regis and he does say in, in his interviews and in his pre-match and post-matches that there are only sort of 13, 14 players or 15 players, I think he said, that are first team ready or what he assumed he kind of looks at as first team players. And then they've got a handful of players who are young and maybe waiting to get there. So he's only really trusting a very select amount of players at the moment. And that, that's understandable given how well the season started. But you would think as the season goes on that he's going to have to start tinkering a little bit. You know, Dan Ballard, I think he's pretty much almost ready there. He's training Alessi as well to come back. It's going to be really difficult for some of these players to get some game time after how well we have started without them and whilst they've been injured as well, particularly with, you know, all nine and Mepham have been absolutely outstanding together. I just can't see Dan getting in there. So it's it's a good headache to have, but I think as time goes on, you're going to want to see and we're going to want to see a bit of rotation. But that is the team I would probably trust myself and go with um, against Preston. Now, looking at Preston themselves, they are 20th in the league as I'm recording this. Um, they've had a very indifferent start to the season, losses, draws here and there. They're not winning too many games themselves, um, but they've picked up some decent points. And, and Sam Greenwood as well, of course, we know him well. He was at Borough last season, he did, was from our academy. Um, and he's scored, I think he's scored three out of the last three, really. Um, but pressing their our team, they're very intense in terms of their pressure, they're very physical. And that's a team that we generally struggle against, which I say quite often now. When we come up against a team that are quite physical and in your face, we do struggle and we find ourselves kind of bending over a little bit. But it's weird because we get with this... In terms of, when I say inconsistent, we do have these inconsistent performances where like one week where, again, for, against Oxford, uh, again, it's a totally different kettle of fish. Every team is very different. But with Oxford, I found us being very, very aggressive in terms of as soon as that second ball was dropped, bang, we get in there, we get on the ball and we control it. We were aggressive in that sense. I don't mean just kicking seven stages shit out of players, but we were very aggressive in that sense, getting right on it. QPR, that wasn't there. And, and then another game will come on and we'll dominate because we just won't allow the opposition to get the second ball. But now in others, we will just allow them to do it. And when that happens and we allow them to play, we offer space and we just say, right, we, and we bend over a little bit and just say, have as many chances as you want. And, and, and if we do that against a team or any team in the championship, we're going to get punished. And that's what I'm fearful of. So I really want us to combat Preston and their physicality with our own. And we don't have too many sort of big 
Brooks Shithouse plays. Oh, Job was getting there in that sense. He was becoming that real unit in midfield, which obviously he won't be able to play. So we don't naturally have that big, strong person in the middle to try and um, to try and sort things out and shore things up. Um, but you know, with Axa Brown, Rig, and Dan Neal in there, if we can just beat them for quality rather than physicality, I think we have a real good chance here. But in terms of my predictions for the game against uh, against Preston, I do think we're going to. Sorry, I do think we're going to concede. Um, Pato, I believe he was saying Regis in the pre-match he was saying that they, they are getting uh, reports sort of every morning, every day with t with uh, injured players, and apparently he's a lot better today. However, he thinks Preston might be a little bit too soon for him, so it will be the the weekend game that'll be uh, Pato's return. You would think. However, if Pato was fit, I probably would play him. I'd probably start him myself. But uh, but yeah, I'm going to go for a two-one Sunderland win, and hopefully Mundell gets on the score sheet. And Isidor as well. That's what I'm going to go for. And I think Greenwood is going to score in response. Because it would only make sense, wouldn't it? It would be just a Sunderland thing, wouldn't it? But hopefully we can get back to winning ways. And we don't start throwing away points. But like I say, QPR, look at that again. Write the game offers. We had 10 men. We weren't playing ideal anyway. And we still got away with a point. Which is a sign of a decent team, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, so let me know in the comments how you felt about the QPR game. Um, and also the game against Preston. Who would you play? Or would you start mixing and matching a few players now? Um, in terms of rotation and what score do you think it's going to be as well but that's it thing guys if you enjoyed hit the like button for me it'd be massively massively appreciated and subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully fledged member of the Sarni army but for now take care stay jamming